and at UBC, UBC Science, uh, we really aim to improve student learning and engagement through what we do in the class. We use new technology and well-researched teaching techniques to give students the best possible experience. So um, through the Carl Levin Science Education Initiative, the Science Center for Learning and Teaching, and also the dedication of our 400 professors, instructors, and lecturers, we're always striving to improve student learning. Tonight, I'm going to share with you a few teaching techniques. And I hope what you notice from these techniques is that they really involve students being engaged in the class, engaged with the concepts, and also engaged with each other. So I'm going to put you in the place of students, and we'll go through an activity that I have on the chemistry of autumn leaf colors. It's kind of timely, although the leaves now have definitely fallen off the trees and been swept away, but we can all have an image of how beautiful they look in the fall when the leaves often change from green to yellows and reds and oranges. So the goal of tonight's lecture is to get you to have a good idea about the mechanism of this autumn leaf color change, and also to uh, think about the specific pigments from their chemical structures and classify specific pigments by their general type. And then also make sure that we know what kinds of pigments typically have which color. So then next year when you see the leaves change, you'll remember, oh, that's this kind of pigment. So as we get started, I want to see where you're starting off. And so everybody has a clicker. And I want you to turn it on by selecting the bottom button, which is the on off. And you can think about this question and then respond with your clicker um, as you come up with the answer. And I want you to work alone as you go through this one. or so, and I can see how many have responded, and I know how many of you there are, so. <laughs> video about this topic and that might give you some ideas about how this works. For a little while each fall, we get a glimpse of one of nature's finest seasonal spectacles. But have you ever wondered exactly why leaves change colors this time of year? Well, wouldn't you be surprised to know that it's chemistry, folks. Most of you know that trees feed themselves with a process called photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, a compound called chlorophyll converts a combination of sunlight and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. The glucose feeds the tree, while the oxygen feeds our atmosphere and allows us to breathe. Chlorophyll just so happens to also be a pigment that puts the green into leaves. Considering that plants use sunlight for energy, it makes perfect sense that plants and trees are cranking out that chlorophyll during the high-intensity summer sunshine. As the daylight hours dwindle, trees do their best to store up enough energy to last them through the fall and winter while chlorophyll production slows down. Chlorophyll contains a type of pigment structure called a porphyrin. As the temperatures drop and the days shorten, leaves produce less and less chlorophyll and the porphyrin starts to break down into smaller components and ultimately loses its green color. And when it does this, it reveals the hidden colors beneath. Primarily, there are reds and yellows in two larger pigment groups, carotenoids and flavonoids. Here are some of the most common pigments from these two groups. It's actually the sugars stored inside trees that help produce some of the most vibrant fall foliage. The stored sugars boost production in a flavonoid called anthocyanin. This pigment provides a vibrant red, and its brightness is dependent on the amount of sunlight a tree gets, so sunnier fall seasons tend to bring more brilliant colors. Carotenoids, on the other hand, consistently produce the yellow tone of leaves. If the fall's a little cloudy, the yellows tend to stand out, but you'll see some brown too, thanks to tannins that can also be found in the trees. So let's keep our fingers crossed for lots of sun so we get ourselves a properly colorful fall. Okay, 
So I hope you enjoyed that video. What I want you to do now is to discuss with the people around you this problem again. I'll open up the poll again, and you can change your answer if your group comes to another consensus, or you're welcome to respond in the same manner. So time for discussion. <laughs> My character is not very about chlorophyll changing its form. That's true. So we know the chloroform is changing as the daylight um, day hours get shorter. But this part, to me, as a chemist, it's, it's not going to then change and look orange. So it's not the broken down chlorophyll that looks orange. So that's why A is not the best answer here. But for B, we have the chlorophyll decomposes, so we know that happens. And then it really allows the other things that have colors to be visible. And so it's those other pigments that we'll talk about in a moment that have those beautiful orange, uh, red, and yellow colors. And then this certainly happens. The leaves do dry out. And so it's a common thing to think that that moisture content or something is really related to the color. Eventually, of course, they fall off the trees. Um, but that's not a very specific answer getting into what the pigments are doing and which pigments are responsible for the color, right, in terms of the chemicals. Is that OK with everyone? Mm -hmm. Great, okay. So what you have um, as a handout is this sheet. So you have a big handout that's very colorful. And this goes through some of the types of pigments that are colorful. So we already talked about chlorophyll being green. And it is green because if you look at the visible portion of the electromagnetic 